Suddenly, the nation is witnessing something we haven't seen before. That day, the news moved so quickly, and it was so heartbreaking. I'm anchoring, and I see a Hertz pull into that. My second grader then pulls up a seat, because this looks good if the older sister's involved, and right. mom's sitting down and putting something down to talk to us. That's right. interesting, right? We're in the kitchen. In a shocking moment, Harris Faulkner stunned everyone by walking away from Fox News. Raised by a Vietnam veteran, she learned early to face challenges head on. She fought her way from writing small pieces for LA Weekly to shining bright at Fox News. At the top of her game, she chose to leave. Why now, when she was at her peak? Tune in to the real story behind her sudden exit just minutes ago. The hidden battlefields of a news anchor's journey. Why would someone so successful make such a bold move? To answer that, let's look at some of her impressive achievements and what might have led her to this point. Harris Faulkner is known for her dedication, hard work, and resilience. But before diving into her recent departure, it's important to appreciate the journey that brought her here. As the camera pans over the bustling newsroom, the murmurs of shocked colleagues fade into a tense silence. She was born on October 13, 1965, at Fort McPherson in Atlanta, Georgia. Her father, Lieutenant Colonel Bobby R. Harris, served in the U.S. Army and completed three tours in Vietnam. Growing up in a military family meant she lived in different places, including a base in Stuttgart, West Germany. After earning a bachelor's degree in mass communications from the University of California, Santa Barbara, Faulkner started her media career. She first worked as a freelance business writer for LA Weekly, where she earned $50 per article. Then she shifted to television, landing an internship at KCOP-TV in Los Angeles before becoming a reporter and anchor at WNCT-TV in Greenville, North Carolina. From 1992 to 2000, she anchored the evening news in Kansas City for WDAF-TV. During this time, she faced some troubling behavior from an acquaintance from North Carolina. However, she pushed through and eventually moved to KSTP-TV in Minneapolis, St. Paul, where she became a key member of their evening news team until 2004, when she joined Fox News. But that wasn't the worst part. At Fox, her career took off. She was involved in the relaunch of A Current Affair and later anchored Fox Report Weekend from 2011 to 2017. She played a significant role in covering the 2018 midterm elections and filled in on various programs. She also appeared regularly on Red Eye and co-hosted The Five. In 2014, she became a co-host on Outnumbered and later transitioned to hosting Outnumbered Overtime in 2017. In 2021, she launched her own show, The Faulkner Focus, where she continued her impactful journalism. And when Tucker Carlson left Fox in June 2023, she temporarily took over his spot on Fox News Tonight, using the opportunity to speak boldly about religion, social issues, and even joking about her pronouns as USA. But even with all this success, what made her decide to leave Fox? What could possibly be next for someone who has achieved so much? In a recent conversation, she shared insights into both her personal life and her career. While sitting down within Kansas City in her Manhattan office, Faulkner opened up about growing up in a military family, her love for Kansas City barbecue, and her support for the Chiefs. She also shared a funny story about how she unexpectedly met her husband. The discussion then shifted to a more serious topic, her important trip to Vietnam, which she has described as a deeply meaningful mission. This journey, she explained, was a way to continue her father's legacy from his time in Vietnam. She led a group of seven people from Fox Nation on this trip with the goal of producing a special feature for their streaming service. They wanted to focus on giving Vietnam veterans the honor and respect they deserve, especially in light of the challenges they faced when they returned to a divided America. She pointed out how veterans from different wars are often treated differently and talked about the struggles that Vietnam veterans, like her father, went through. This made her think about how Americans could do a better job of showing appreciation for these veterans. 
Her personal and work life blend with surprising turns. A daughter's exploration through her father's Vietnam legacy. Looking back on her trip to Vietnam, she shared how deeply it affected her, both personally and professionally. Her father's service in the Vietnam War sparked her lifelong interest in the country, which holds an important place in American history. For her, the 2023 trip felt like a continuation of a personal journey, giving her the chance to reflect on her father's experiences and gain a deeper understanding of the complex history of the Vietnam War. But this wasn't the hardest part of her reflection. Back home with her team, she worked on a project to respectfully honor Vietnam veterans. She wanted to acknowledge the pain and division that surrounded their return home, a stark contrast to how veterans from earlier wars were welcomed. Growing up in a military family taught her valuable lessons, like resilience and adaptability. These were qualities her father, who believed in serving his country with a sense of higher purpose, instilled in her. Her father passed away on Christmas morning in 2020, a moment that brought a big change in how she now experiences the holiday. He had always been a strong and positive influence in her life, continuing to teach math and physics to young people even after he retired. She remembered him as someone who gave hope and dedicated himself to future generations. The morning of his death was particularly tough for her. Her father was supposed to meet her sister for Christmas brunch, but never showed up. After some time, her uncles found him peacefully passed away in his sleep. They believed it was his calm final moment, like he was called home for one last time. As the conversation continued, she talked about her early career highlights, like winning her first Emmy and Headliner Award. She also looked back on her time at Fox 4 and her brief period in Greenville, North Carolina, which helped pave the way for her national career. She shared that Kansas City was the place where she truly felt a sense of community, something that has greatly influenced her career and outlook on life. She remembered how some people wondered if being open about her beliefs might cause problems. But she always responded confidently, saying she was exactly where she was meant to be. She made it clear that she wasn't trying to change anyone's mind. However, during her news broadcasts, especially during tough times like floods or tornadoes, her faith would naturally come up in conversation. Working alongside her co-anchor, Phil Witt, and their teams in weather and sports made her feel supported, not only in her career, but also as a woman making her way in the industry. She fondly talked about her family's connection to Kansas City, recalling how her parents, who had moved first to Denver and then Texas, always loved visiting her there. In fact, they loved the city so much that they even opened a temporary barbecue restaurant, blending Kansas City and Texas styles. She laughed as she told stories about their excitement and support during big moments in her life like when she received the Amelia Earhart Lifetime Achievement Award in Atchison, Kansas. Her father even surprised everyone with an unexpected speech, sharing his memories of living on a military base in Kansas. Her parents also played a big role when she bought her first house on Ward Parkway. They helped her with the purchase and renovation, marking an important step in both her personal and professional life. It was a significant time and she remembered how they always wanted to be part of her success. Her personal and work life blend with surprising turns, the love story that shaped the news. But this wasn't the most surprising part. She also shared the story of how she met her husband. At first, they were colleagues and even competitors working in the local news scene. He was at the CBS station in Minneapolis while she worked at the ABC affiliate, KSTP. Though they were rivals, they respected each other. He was known for his strong investigative reporting, while she was making history as the first black woman to anchor the 5 p.m. evening news in the state. Their paths crossed in an unexpected way. The then mayor of St. Paul, Norm Coleman, noticed her during a segment where she was jogging by the river. This sparked his interest, and he asked a mutual friend, Julie Nelson, to introduce them. Julie worked with the mayor on the 6 p.m. news, and although she was surprised by the mayor's interest, she decided to set up a meeting. But first, she made sure to get permission from everyone involved. 
This added an interesting twist to their relationship, since they were competitors in the busy world of local news. But there's more to the story. She trusted Julie's judgment and agreed to meet him at Julie's birthday party. However, when he showed up, he wasn't alone. He brought a date. She left the story there, hinting that there was more to it for those who were curious. Throughout her career, she often talks about inspiring others and has been open about the challenges of balancing her personal and professional life. In interviews, she has shared how she handled a particularly eventful year, managing motherhood while keeping up with her career. She always approached big national issues with care and said that her success came from staying true to her own path. When asked about the legacy she hopes to leave, she expressed a deep desire to be remembered as a loving and dedicated mother. For her, that's what shaped every part of her life. Harris Faulkner often takes time to reflect on her life, especially her role as a mother to her two biracial daughters, who are now 12 and 14 years old. These young girls are at a stage in life where they're discovering who they are and what kind of people they want to become. Faulkner strongly believes that being a good mother means helping her daughters find their passion for making the world a better place. She teaches them that kindness and compassion are signs of strength, not weakness. She also thinks a lot about what it means to be a leader. For her, it's about being strong and honest when facing tough situations. She emphasizes the importance of not letting self-doubt or obstacles stop you, even when people tell you to be less bold. Overcoming these challenges, she believes, is key to growing as a person and finding success. Another thing Faulkner talks about is how the roles of women are changing. She's proud of how today's women feel confident in their power and self-worth. She's especially glad that the term alpha female, which used to have negative connotations, is now seen as a symbol of women's progress and empowerment. As a journalist, Faulkner has had many opportunities to cover serious topics with care. She remembers the heartbreaking moment when she had to report on the Sandy Hook tragedy. When she saw a funeral car pull up, she paused to share a moment of silence with her viewers. It was a reminder that sometimes it's the quiet moments that speak the loudest. But that wasn't the only emotional moment in her career. In a 2020 interview with former President Donald Trump, after the tragic death of George Floyd, Faulkner found herself in a deep conversation with him. When Trump started talking about the protests, she interrupted to remind him of Floyd's last words, calling out for his mother. For her, this moment highlighted how important it is to focus on genuine human connections rather than just making bold statements. Her beliefs shape her public and private life. Breaking Strange Barriers Faulkner also adjusted well to broadcasting from home, especially when the world changed in 2020. She liked the flexibility and believed it was important to be able to focus on her family when needed. She's passionate about conversations on the future of women in the workplace and shared how proud she is of being a hardworking woman of color who earned her own daytime TV show. But there's more to her story. Not many people know that she became Fox's first black female daytime anchor in 2014. She started as a co-host on the show Outnumbered before taking on her own segment, Outnumbered Overtime. Her journey in journalism began in the Midwest, working in Kansas City and later Minnesota before joining National News. Her rise from local news to leading her own show is a testament to her hard work and the significant role she plays as a black woman in the industry. Harris Faulkner sees her role as a lead presenter at Fox News as something that's deeply connected to the support and recognition she receives from the network. A lot of people make quick assumptions about her political views based on her ethnicity, gender, and the fact that she works for a conservative media station but Faulkner remains positive and handles these assumptions with grace and resilience. In a 2020 interview with the Associated Press, Faulkner shared how people often think they know everything about you just by looking at your public persona. But as she pointed out, this gives you the perfect opportunity to surprise them in the best ways. She is well-respected by her peers, not just because she's won six Emmy Awards, but also because of how thorough and thoughtful she is in her journalism. 
One great example of her skill was her interview with former President Donald Trump during the height of the Black Lives Matter protests. Bill Gruskin from Columbia Journalism Review praised her for staying neutral throughout the interview without showing any bias or favoritism. What made it even more impressive was how she gently wove her own experiences as a black woman and a mother into the conversation, a rare but effective move in journalism. The Twin Cities Pioneer Press had mixed feelings about Gruskin's commentary, which made Faulkner feel a mix of pride and humility. She emphasized the importance of delivering journalism that is accurate, truthful, and strong, values she holds dear. In a conversation with Fox News, she reflected on how her past assignments shaped her career. These included covering the AIDS crisis in South Africa, the disappearance of Natalie Holloway in Aruba, and the Oklahoma City bombing. Faulkner credits several people with having a major influence on her life and career. These include family members and famous figures like Nelson Mandela, Barbara Walters, Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, and Diane Sawyer. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia, but her childhood was quite unique, largely because her father served in the military. This meant they moved around a lot, including to a base in Stuttgart, Germany. Growing up in different places and meeting people from various backgrounds taught her how to be strong and adaptable. Her college years at the University of California, Santa Barbara, helped her land her first big job in Los Angeles. From there, she moved to Greenville, North Carolina, and later to Kansas City, Missouri. It was in Kansas City that she really began to make a name for herself, winning major awards and meeting her future husband. Faulkner remembers the early days of her career fondly, calling them ridiculously fun in an interview with the Kansas City Star. She has a special place in her heart for the Midwest, especially because she's a huge Kansas City Chiefs fan. Even though she lives in New Jersey now, she still shows her team spirit by wearing Chiefs colors on game days and decorating her office with Chiefs memorabilia. Past joys and personal milestones shape her story, the spotlight and shadows of a media icon. In that same interview with the Kansas City Star, she laughingly shared how her husband tries to make space for his sports gear, but she insists on keeping most of the room for her Kansas items, joking that she needs room to breathe. Another highlight from her time in Kansas City came in 1999 when she sang the Star Spangled Banner in front of 70,000 fans at Arrowhead Stadium. Faulkner told Chiefs Wire that it was an unforgettable experience and now she can't help but sing along whenever the national anthem is played. Right before the Chiefs went to the Super Bowl in February 2021, she posted a throwback photo of that day on Instagram, reliving the special moment. And then there was the time in 2018 when Leslie Jones humorously impersonated her on Saturday Night Live. In an interview with the Twin Cities Pioneer Press, Faulkner said she found the parody amusing and took it as a fun nod to her public image. She couldn't believe the honor she had received. It felt like a dream come true, and she knew that Jones had truly captured her essence. Later, when Jones portrayed her again, she noticed they were even more alike, not just in how they looked, but also in how they sounded. She was shocked to see that Jones had bought the exact same ice blue dress she had once worn. It made her feel like she was living in some kind of dream world. By October of 2018, she mentioned to Variety that she would be open to the idea of Jones playing her in a movie, especially if Jones was ready to take on a deeper acting role. She recalled how Jones had nailed the part on SNL, down to the fake eyelashes, and enjoyed the comedic side of it. But it wasn't always fun to be copied. Back in 2015, she had sued Hasbro after they used her name without asking her. They put her name on a toy hamster in their littlest pet shop line, and she wasn't happy about it. She argued that it hurt her reputation as a journalist and made it look like she was endorsing the toy. The toy even resembled her, with similar skin color, eye shape, and makeup style. The case was settled in October 2016, with the toy being pulled from shelves and a clear statement 
that she had never supported its use. She also loves to travel. In an interview with Luxury Travel Magazine, she shared her unforgettable honeymoon trip to Hawaii, where she adored the calm and beauty of the island. Nowadays, she spends her free time at her family's retreat in Sedona, Arizona, where she enjoys hiking, visiting wellness resorts, and playing golf with her husband and daughters. Some of her favorite travel spots include Crane Beach in Barbados, Acadia National Park in Maine, and Montauk in New York. For her, coastal destinations on the East Coast are perfect for family road trips from their New Jersey home. But that's not all. When she isn't traveling, she loves to be outdoors, whether hiking with her family, gardening, or walking along the beach. She believes that connecting with nature, especially feeling the earth under her feet, helps her stay grounded. She thinks this close connection to nature might be what keeps her down to earth, along with her strong family roots. However, leaving Fox News was a big change. Faulkner, who played an important role in shaping discussions on Outnumbered, recently stepped away from the show, leaving many viewers confused about why. Her departure has sparked a lot of questions, including whether she's looking for new opportunities, either at Fox or somewhere else. No matter the reason, her absence will definitely be felt by her loyal fans, who appreciated her smart insights and captivating presence. Only time will tell what's next for Faulkner and the show. With her impressive journalistic experience, she's sure to be a strong candidate for other major roles, and her fans have mixed emotions, both excitement and sadness, about her next steps. Many of them have voiced their thoughts on social media, reflecting on her contributions to the show and wondering what the future holds for Outnumbered. What controversial move could Faulkner make next? Share your thoughts, like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more.